This is New Jersey. So Pedro, are we are we heading into the seven circles of hell seven tonight? Circles of, not not likely. This is not. <laughs> the actual circle of hell would have been the uh, I don't know if they're still around. Bad Luck Thirteen Riot Extravaganza. That's the name. That was the name. I was having. I didn't think I could remember it. And just just terrifying, terrifying, and really, it was the first wrestlecore band, which is a genre that never caught on. And um, they would, uh, you know, there would be, a, I mean, it was like a rest, like you see, watch pro, pro wrestling on TV, there'd, have, there'd be a table, suddenly a table would appear, there'd be a ladder, guy, the band is playing, a guy would climb up the table and boom, like crash. So usually at a show, the band is going to come up, everybody's up at the stage. Nope, not for a right, not for a bad like 13 right extravaganza show. No, all the kids were like way in the back and it was just empty, except for me. I like took a chair and I sat down and then the curtain starts opening and this sound of, it's like, it's like, like just open this door in, in the ground and the, the sound of hell <laughs> rising up. It was, and uh, somebody like fired like a bottle rocket or something at me and I'm just woohoo and then crash, crash and I'm like, get, gotta get out of the wood because the kids are finally zooming in and it was just a record and then somebody of course called the police and uh, and uh, there was smoke everywhere like fireworks had been going off and uh, the cops arrived and one of the, the uh, them was a woman and she walked out and she must have been a mom she walks in and goes oh no we're not having this <laughs> no none of that tonight none of that tonight <laughs> sorry I, I'm sorry why would I ask you if you can suggest a, a subject that, that you find intriguing, interesting, etc., about New Jersey or about where you live in Jersey? Do, do you suggest what we're about to get into tonight? I'm just familiar with it. It's a, in part, that's one of the reasons. See, what can I... Oh, the basement punk rock scene, of course. That's, uh, that's the, the, the thing. And I go there all the time. I'm you know, involved in it, so I'm a part of it. So... That just seemed like, you know, the logical thing. There are other things, but that was the first thing that came into my mind. We are at an undisclosed location somewhere in the state of New Jersey. That's it. That's all I can say. We're at, we're at a house, and there are bands playing uh, downstairs. One is playing now, and that's it. It's in New Brunswick. It's, this is a, one of the shows, one of the basement shows, one of the venues that uh, you'll find uh, scattered around New Brunswick. In other parts of New Jersey, I think there are like, probably basement shows going on, but New Brunswick, it's been going on for a few years, and this is one of them. This is one of the venues. You know, a lot of kids are too young to get into a bar, and a lot of bars want to do all ages, but it's, you know, problematic, you know, uh, you know legally. And for a while, there was a, uh, a place in New Brunswick, Scott Hall, and there would be, you know, hardcore shows there. There would be another, you know, there was another, but, you know, the big venues, you know, the actual venue venues that are supposed to be, you know, for playing music just, you know, weren't around. And so somebody somewhere, I'm trying to, I don't know which was the first basement show, if there, you know, ever such a thing. People would have shows at houses all the time, but it's become really common that there are punk houses that have show houses, and they all have their different names, and somebody books there you know, books, bands, and that's, that's, that's the way it's been for quite a while. It's been pretty, it, New Brunswick has a reputation as a place for bands to, to stop, you know, centrally located, and uh, so that's one thing that helps. And um, there's no, it's, it's well known, it's like kind of like, it has a reputation in the, in the bands, but fortunately it's not famous because, <laughs> you know, an article in, in Spin or Rolling Stone would destroy it, and we can't have that. One, two, three, four.
it's all very secretive because they want to like, you know, they don't want the local constabulary coming along and, and shutting down shows, uh, which some cops think is actually a, a waste of time. And <laughs> I know one of one cop said, yeah, my, my kid goes to these. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of ridiculous. But um, yeah, so what we do is secret. And that's, you know, so getting the word out was really tough at first. They, flyers without an address. It would say, ask a punk. <laughs> Basement scene is the only place in America where you're going to find good rock and roll. In some states, I lived in Pittsburgh for a few months, and the way they do their basement scene is very different. You can put your address on the internet, they'll make like Facebook pages for their uh, houses. But here in New Brunswick, um, cops really are willing to crack down, and like a lot of what you do has to be very secretive because if you know the address goes up on the internet, it's not that hard for either like the wrong people to come. Um, or for the cops to show up, uh, you know, we're not doing this legally. We do it underground, um, and we do that because there's nowhere else to play. We have all these bands in New Brunswick. We have these great, amazing bands, but like, all all you can really do is play like, I don't know, stuff for the college, which you kind of have to tone down. And here in the basement scene, you can kind of do whatever you want. And I think that's uh, really freeing and empowering for a lot of people. Come here. We're gonna get interviewed. Can I interview him? Can that be yeah, our sex? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is gonna be funny. Why is this better than playing a bar venue? Uh, because bars have an overhead and it's lame, and they never really promote, and you don't get any money, and that's whatever. But also, the people have more fun. The basement shows. I I love them. They're hot. They're sticky. And that's great. Yes. In a world like post-internet, where subcultures are kind of hard to find organically, I think it's, uh, it's a pretty cool one, and I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, dude. It's almost like it's uh, it's it's something you got to know about. You know, it's not a uh, it's not an every every person thing. So it really is for like like it really is for the fans. You know, it's cool to play in a place like this because people give a shit. <laughs> Uh, our band is four of uh, four best friends who live together, and uh, we got really into the Bad Brains because you know they're really cool, all black punk band, you know, doing stuff that is a little bit different than what black people were supposed to do in the yeah. 70s, <laughs> 70s early 80s, and uh, they talked about positive mental attitude. We always think that's a really interesting thing. Whenever we get down, it's easy to get down being a musician. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't really get paid that much money. Sometimes it's very unsatisfying, but you gotta have that PMA. Yeah. That attitude. Yeah, you gotta dude. do it for you gotta do it for yourself, you gotta do it for everybody else. It's true.
place once you get to meet the kids, you make friends, you see what's going on in the town. Uh, it's just a little more direct and interesting and more of a cultural exchange than playing in a bar. Like you guys have now seen a window into like DIY culture and it's, uh, it's a very wholesome, very creative and community building venture. Like these kids aren't just like doing drugs and like you know, no, like, they're just playing they're, music. They're playing music. They're sharing. Their making art. They're making sharing beautiful art. posters. Like uh, this place is it's incredibly community building yeah. for any any like bunch of young people. It's really important. And uh, you know, when when the cops come and bust a place, you know, it's you really wonder what their motives are uh, when you see like this is exactly what kids should be doing. <laughs> really see an interesting town most of our Canadian uh, friends and who tour like they end up they don't cross like, the border well, they don't cross the border they Be stay brave. in Canada you gotta scared. you gotta come down I'm not scared it's better yeah. down here really in a lot of ways well there's, there's more options there's more towns in Canada there's very few towns to play so you drive a lot more you drive more. a lot and you play less so we like playing more and driving less <laughs> The other advantage for a band like us is uh, people are bringing their own booze, then they have more money to buy t-shirts. Mm -hmm. 